Howdy from Texas. How do you like that greeting? That's a Texas word. Howdy. Uh, this is Dinosaur George answering the questions that I get from around the world. This episode, the highlighted item is a little oligocene dog called Hesperocyon. It is a skull of Hesperocyon. Uh, this is a little tiny dog. It's item 3065. It retails for $38. If you like prehistoric mammals or if you like dogs, either one, this is a good piece to add to your collection. Uh, it's a, some people believe this dog was arboreal, meaning it was capable of living in trees. Some people think it was a nocturnal hunter and burrowed underground for protection. Whatever the case is, this is a cool little piece and I hope you like it. If you do, you'll notice a link uh, on my site where you can go straight to my catalog and hunt him down. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Spinosaurus Brandon from Becker, Minnesota. Hey, Spinosaurus Brandon. It's nice to hear from you again. Hey, George, it's been a long time. I missed your questions. Thank you, buddy. It has been a long time. Got two of them for you. What has been your opinion on Jurassic World? I liked it. I enjoyed it very much. I had a lot of fun. Uh, a couple of, uh, couple of uh, parts made me jump, and uh, I was in awe. I, I enjoyed it very, very much. And I read that Acrocanthosaurus was an allosaurid, and it may have been its oldest relative, which got me to thinking, do you think Allosaurus, do you think Allosaurus survived the late Jurassic and lived long enough to have perhaps evolve into Acrocanthosaurus, or is it a hybrid species mixed with something else? Just want, want to hear what you say. Uh, glad you're back and hope to hear more from you. Thank you, Spinosaurus, Brandon. Um, there are enough differences between Acrocanthosaurus and Allosaurus for me to say pretty confidently, Allosaurus did not evolve into Acrocanthosaurus because there's too many, too many variances between that amount of time. So I don't think they did. Did they have a, a, an earlier cousin or a relative or was, did they branch off earlier than we think? No way of knowing. The problem with the Jurassic formations and they are somewhat limited. So we have a big gap of time missing between the end of the Jurassic and the middle Cretaceous to really understand the evolutionary trail that Allosaurus may have taken or that Acrocanthosaurus came from. So at this point, I just don't know, buddy. All right, Adam from Sharm El Sheikh, South Sinai, Egypt. Hi, Dinosaur George, or can I call you DG or Dr. Blassing? <laughs> Adam, that's cool. Call me anything you want, but it's just not doctor. Um, anyway, I'm Adam. Well, Adam, it's very good to hear from you. I'm a really huge fan of your series, Jurassic Fight Club, and how are you? I'm doing well. I'm glad you like that series, Adam. I, I gotta tell you, I enjoyed making it a lot. It, it was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it. Uh, and how is your museum and replicas and videos going? They're going well. Traveling Museum is doing very, very well. I'm being booked nonstop, traveling all the time, and I enjoy it. And there's been 100,000 kids that have come through it just in three years looking at it, and it's very rewarding, actually in two years. So it's very re rewarding that so many kids get to see it. I have a question for you. Since the era of dinosaurs, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous, had other animals uh, had other animals in it, is it possible that one of those animals can actually evolve back into a dinosaur? That was my question, and I hope you, you do a second season of Jurassic Fight Club. Thank you, buddy. I wish we could do a second season, but it's very unlikely. Uh, it's simply too expensive to do shows like that, and the ratings weren't positive enough to get some big backer to say it's worth another season. So I, I don't think it'll ever happen again. And, and quite frankly, I'm so busy now, I don't know how I would do it anyway, but it would be kind of fun. Okay, is it possible for an animal to evolve back into dinosaurs? Well, I don't think so. And the reason why I say that is the world is different. Animals evolve based on the environment. The environment starts the evolutionary path, it always does. Uh, there was a higher, how cool is that? That's my phone. It just sounds like Star Trek. Somebody just beamed a board. That's kind of cool. If something appears behind me, let me know because it'll be very creepy if it does. Okay, um, so could they have evolved into a new spe uh, back into dinosaurs? I don't think so, Adam. I don't think that's possible because the to be or to be able to evolve back into gigantic animals, if you're talking about the big ones, the environment wouldn't support that, and so. Um, I don't think it's possible. I think at the end of the Cretaceous, when the big extinction occurred, I think it wiped out a lot of the environment and all animals took a different evolutionary path. By the time the Earth recovered to grow back to those gigantic forests and all those things, I think evolution had gone down a different trail and I don't think it was ever gonna go back to where it was before. 
plus the lower oxygen percentage. To me, I believe dinosaurs relied on a very high oxygen percentage, and that just doesn't exist anymore, and it never did exist after the big event. So I don't think they ever would have gone back. I think if you look at birds, they were as close to evolving back to dinosaurs like the, like the terror birds, you know, the Forest Rockus and Endrogalornis and Titanus and all those guys. I think they were kind of filling that role, but that's as big as it got. All right, Christian from Middletown, New Jersey. Hello, George. I hope you're having the best of times right now. I am, buddy. I am enjoying my life. My question is, I recently watched Jurassic World, and I saw that one of the characters named Owen said that the Indominus Rex was killing for sport. Do you think that some dinosaurs like Allosaurus, Nana, Tyrannus, or Velociraptors ever killed for sport? P.S. I will always be a fan of your work. Uh, and I too hope to become a paleontologist like you someday. Christian, that is a very complimentary thing. I, I, I appreciate that very much. For me, success for me is knowing that I might have been able to motivate a young person or any person to follow their love of paleontology. That to me will be how I define my success. It's not going to be money. It's not going to be anything else. It's going to be one day some young person, man, woman, whatever, come up to me and say, you inspired me to continue to be a paleontologist and my life is better for it. And that, I hope. So thank you very much. Okay, did animals kill for sport? Wow, now that's great. Now there are animals that will kill other animals and not eat them, but that's not for sport. That is for honing their skills to become a more effective hunter. A perfect example of that is your house cat. They go out, they kill a bird, they kill a mouse. What do they do? They bring it back and give it to the family as a gift. <laughs> they don't eat it because they want to share it, but also uh, they are also practicing and honing their skills to be a hunter. So I believe that you, maybe we would see animals killing prey and not eating them all, but that's not for fun. The way we think of fun, it is to hone its skills. Also, a lot of predators are reactionary. Uh, fish are a very fine example of that. I caught a fish one time at the coast and when I reeled it in, I saw the tail of another fish sticking out of its mouth. It couldn't even swallow what it ate, but it still attacked my lure. Why? Because my lure went by and was fleeing. And its mind is hardwired to chase things that are fleeing. We see that with coyotes. They do that with sheep a lot. They go into a pen, the sheep panic, the coyote kills the sheep and doesn't spend any time eating it. It's because it's reactionary. Okay, Ed from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's Ed or it's Eddie. When they forwarded this to me, if it is Eddie, I apologize. They left off the Y. They just put EDD. So I don't know if, if it was supposed to be Eddie, but I'm just going to call you Ed. Hi, DG. I love your videos, and I've been watching them for years now. Thank you, Ed. D, I'm glad to hear that, buddy. My question is, what is your opinion on Forrest Rockus, and could it win in a fight with a Smilodon? Now, Forrest Rockus is one naughty chicken. That thing is a very, very dangerous animal. I love it. They're fast and they're powerful. And I think the advantage they would have had over an animal like Smilodon is that their feet were weapons as well as their beak. They had a tremendous kick, much like a modern ostrich. So I suspect that they would have been capable of at least keeping a Smilodon at bay. Maybe not killing it, but keeping it away. Smilodon would be kind of hard pressed to get up close for fear of being eviscerated by the foot of that nasty critter. That's a great question though and I love Forrest Rockus. Some people pronounce it Forrest Raycoys by the way, but I like them. All right, Ryan from St. George, Utah. Hi, DG. I have been an admirer of your work for years. I love your YouTube videos and I love dinosaurs. Thank you, Ryan. That's very kind. I love dinosaurs too, buddy. Here's some questions I was wondering if you can answer. How fast could Velociraptor run? I've seen estimates ranging anywhere between 25 and 40 miles an hour, but I want to know your opinion. Let's get to that one first. Estimating the speed of an extinct animal is impossible. We might be able to get close using math and science, but it is not possible to fully understand how fast an animal can run. So when you see these big variances, it's because it's all based on estimates. We don't even know how fast living animals can run. We know how fast we've recorded them running, but does that mean that's as fast as that animal can run? Or is that as fast as that animal chose to run at that given moment? 
um, you can tell an animal to run, but you don't know it's like people. I could tell you to run from here to the mailbox, but it doesn't mean you're going to run as fast as you possibly can. You're going to run as fast as you choose. So I can't know for certain how fast anything other than a human can run. With us, we understand. We can say run as fast as you can, and we'll run as fast as you can. But you can't tell that to a cheetah or a horse or a leopard or anything else. You can't tell it to run as fast as you can. It's just going to run as fast as it needs to. So how to estimate the speed, I would suspect 40 is probably on the very high end. Uh, maybe even 25 might be on the high end. That's pretty fast. But whatever the case, they certainly had the leg muscles to drive them forward at a pretty high rate of speed. So speed was certainly an important part. Second question, what was the first dinosaur fossil you ever discovered? Ah, this is so cool. One Christmas, I got a bag of dinosaur toys, and in those toys was an Allosaurus that I thought looked so much cooler than all the other toys. That's when Allosaurus became my favorite. I loved Allosaurus from that moment on. I studied it, I researched it. Um, one of the people that was really familiar with Allosaurus, uh, Jim Madsen, I was lucky enough to befriend him and meet him and sit down and have the longest conversation about Allosaurus. I loved it. The very first time I ever went dinosaur bone hunting, the first bone I spotted in the ground and picked up ultimately was identified as the tail vertebra from an Allosaurus. That, my friend, is fate. Okay, if you could make any new fossil discovery that would progress our knowledge of dinosaurs, what would it be? Thank you so much for making these awesome dinosaur videos. They're awesome. Sincerely, Ryan. P.S. Your favorite dinosaur, Allosaurus, is the state dinosaur of the state I love, which is Utah. Ooh, nice. I may have to move to Utah, my friend. <laughs> Anybody that loves Allosaurus is a friend of mine, so that's so cool. Okay, if I could make, here's what I would like to make, if I could find a discovery. I would like to be able to find a fully developed infant Tyrannosaurus rex in the egg. And the reason why is because it would settle once and for all whether Nanotyrannus is a juvenile form of Tyrannosaurus rex, or if Tyrannosaurus rex is a definitive separate species from Nanotyrannus. If we were to find it, a baby embryo in the egg, we would be able to identify tooth count, we'd be able to look at the shape of the teeth, the shape of the skull, all of those things that are necessary. And if it was a carbon copy of an adult, ha ha, Nanotyrannus debate is over. If it is a nano tyrannous looking thing, ha ha, there's still a debate. Yeesh. Anyway, that is what I would like to find. Either that or a frozen Tyrannosaurus rex in ice laying next to a frozen Edmontosaurus with their arm around each other in front of a television because that would start a whole new debate. All right. <laughs> Last question. John from Australia, from the Gold Coast. Hello, Dinosaur George. Hope you're having a great day. I am, John. Hope you are too, buddy. I would last like to ask you who would win, the Indominus Rex from Jurassic World or the T-Rex? Indominus had the sickle-like claws but small teeth. T-Rex had the bone-crushing teeth with small arms. All the best, John. John, obviously Indominus Rex is a made-up dinosaur, so there's nothing I could think of that would add any sort of scientific credibility to it. You, you made some pretty good points. One has long arms with big claws, one has big teeth with little claws, which is better? Well, the force used to propel claws forward is nowhere near the force used to bring jaws shut, at least not on these dinosaurs. So one may have long arms that could give you a nasty wound, but one bite from Tyrannosaurus rex, and that's the end of that. So if, if these, if, if uh, the answer to your question would be, I would say, just like in the movie, Tyrannosaurus Rex would be the winner. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing it. I'm going to shoot a bunch of more of these today while I'm here, while the lights are on and the studio's set up. So uh, if you have a question, go to my website. I'll try my best to answer it. Until later, we'll see you.